So welcome everyone to the standard developer meeting from the captain team today. <clears throat> we will see what the core team has been working on in the last two weeks. So let me share my screen with the agenda. So please add yourself to the attendee list since I'm also <clears throat> forgetting to add that every single time. So Flo unfortunately cannot be part of this meeting as a conflicting appointment. So I will go over his work briefly. So Flo work on a small fix for the tests, nothing special. In sorry, not the test, the uh, automatic provisioning extension point that we offer. We had a small problem where the namespace was not returned or was not passed towards the provisioner. So now it's there. Then he worked a lot on improving our testing pipeline, specifically changing the integration test and move them into component tests. This had a big boost in terms of run time for the pipelines. Now, instead of requiring 20 minutes to run this test or 10 minutes for running this test, we are down to two minutes. And also here, he plan to do the same things for the shipper controller, but <clears throat> for other parts of the, for other tests, basically. Is there any question for this free? If no, then I will hand over to Anna. Is Anna here? Because I cannot see anymore the, oh yes. But you're muted, Anna. <laughs> Try to unmute. Press, press the button. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, so many audio issues today. No, th this does not work. You need to press the button. It's not. Try to change the microphone to the computer one, maybe. <laughs> nope. I think we can go over to the next person in the list. And then once you fix out things, you can pick it up again. Oh, now I hear something. It was working? It's working now. OK, I'm not using the Jabra. That's why it's working. That's uh, kind of a bummer. OK, share my screen then. So this sprint, I worked of a few fixes and uh, to our integration test and some cleanup on all deprecated things. So let's see. First thing I worked on was the integration test on uh, using a proxy. So in the text, we had a specific deployment for a squid service, which was functioning as a proxy. But we already, for other tests, used a mock server. So what I've done here was just uh, adding a few line of code to make sure that we can use the mock servers as the proxy in this test and uh, yeah, verify that everything works fine. Nothing much here. Uh, for the cleanup PR, this was about removing the old subscription from the uniform. So if you check the captain API, um, yeah. There are a few things in the uniform that don't really make much sense for us. Um, yeah, here in the subscription, we used to have uh, subscriptions and subscription where there was a, a list of, uh, of the subscription in the model. Maybe I can find the model here somewhere. 
and uh, now this has been removed by all parts and uh, I can show you in the PR here this has been changed in the go utils library just uh, eliminating this part and uh, then what has to be done was to in shipyard make sure to remove all the filters where we were uh, working with that in the handlers and in the database nothing complicated just uh, removing something which was deprecated since three or four version um then there was a tiny little bug in the scheduled pipeline uh doesn't really even worth speaking about that uh, the point is that only when the pipeline is scheduled this branch will be checked and uh, curly break were missing so this part was empty and scheduled pipeline was failing too bad as the final work um in the new library we have the cp connector we used to have um nets connector which was initialized by the user and passed to the library and this was a problem because then we would have a time in which the nets is receiving events but the library is not actively using it yet because it's not started so to avoid that, uh, just changed this in a way that uh, when we create the new NATs, we just store the data relative to it. And then every time we use uh, the NATs connection, we will call a function where we only once connect to NATs in this way. Uh, such a problem is not happening. And uh, there is another PR, which is work in progress, where I am merging this change in all of the services that are correlated. Mm, yeah, I think that's more or less it. If there are no questions, I guess maybe I can move on to Andre. Thanks. Uh, yeah, you can hear me normally, hopefully. Good. So I'll share my screen. Ah. Something went wrong. Due to some reason, I cannot share my screen. Uh, maybe we can move if forward. If you want, I can, I can share the screen for you. Yeah, if, that would be great. Great. Uh, yes, yeah, so last print, uh, I worked mostly on the two issues. The, we had some leftovers from the zero downtime testing. Um, which was mostly about fixing uh, the bugs we discovered, polishing the tests, and yeah, really testing and uh, that we have zero downtime. One of the bug bug fixes required was actually um, in the CP connector library, where we had uh, problems with the subscriptions, for example, on the webhook. Uh, so when the newer, um, the problem was when the newer pod was and wanted to gain kind of and was not able to get the subscriptions from the older there. and was waiting. So this was fixed by the is uh, pull request where we actually immediately after the start of the subscription source, uh, we're trying, are you receiving me? Yes. Yes. Uh, immediately after starting the subscription source, which kind of takes Now I don't hear you anymore. <laughs> uh, long story short, maybe I can, because did you drop? Okay. Uh, uh, the problem was that we were <clears throat> uh, 
catching the subscription only after this timer was started. So we didn't fetch immediately subscription as soon as the integration started, but only after a, on a specific amount of time. Instead, now the first thing we do when the subscription starts, then we also fetch the information and then we start the timer. So there is no gap of time where subscription are not collected. Andre, are you still part of the call? Because I cannot see who is in, who is not. Looks like... No, um... it's not. Okay. Then let's jump to the next one. Hopefully we will have less connection issues. Then I guess, Bernd, is your turn. Okay, cross your fingers. <laughs> um going to share my screen. Good then. Um, the first one which I'm going to briefly discuss is um, also in the part of the CP connector library where I just enhanced the synchronization during shutdown of that thing. Um, basically what, me what that means is the library is in the background kicking off some coroutines um, which we want to shut down gracefully like we do for other parts or other components in Captain as well and also here I enhanced it a little bit uh, with the usual things you do um, namely with the weight group the outside so each component that's going to be started for example the event source the subscription source will receive that weight group and I think you're going to see it here. Um, there will be a weight group of size two because we have two components to, to be synchronized. And later on, when the things are going to shut down, we synchronize on this weight group to be finished. And only after that, we set the state to registered false because only that we know that each component was able to gracefully shut down, for example, disconnect from a message broker, or disconnect from subscription API, and so on. So that was the first thing which should uh, even hardening the shutdown a little bit more. Although we didn't saw issues there, uh, it was not completely correct and now it's synchronized and just you can now trust on this uh, Boolean value which says it's registered or not because it's properly synchronized. It was the first one. Um, Next thing, OS a CVP connector. Now we are able to inject a log implementation. Uh, the first version of the CP connector was also using a logger, but um, kind of a, yeah, you see it here. Um, default logger, which is just, um, yeah, fulfilling the interface of our, our uh, loggers and just putting the stuff on standard out and nothing more. Now you're able to use the with logger function for each component to inject a proper logger, for example, logras or what else, um, so that we can actually use, or the user can actually inject uh, his favorite logger and use all the log level features and so on with this library. Um, I think Anna also already make made use of that uh, in other components so that we have proper logging when we are using the library. Next thing, CP connector again. <laughs> um, there just took the opportunity to do a little package restructuring because the first version of it was just uh, having all the components and all the files in one package one big package, which was just called, I think, control plane. Now I've just, um, yeah, basically created smaller packages. You can see it here. Control plane package, event measure, event source, a fake package, log forwarder. So basically for each, uh, com each aspect of the library, uh, we will have now our nice little package, which makes it, yeah, way more clean on my mind and we don't need this uh, strange 
constructor function names like new uniform subscription source, we can just say every, every for each component just new, and the thing is gonna be created. Um, that's it for this, I guess. Nothing too complicated there. And one little thing I just explored uh, where we are using um, Swagger documentation. The swag command we are using for it uh, offers a neat little thing which is called swag, swag, fmt, swag format. Uh, which I just executed for the whole Captain Core code base. And what it's basically doing is just reformatting uh, the Swagger commands uh, to have, yeah, to be aligned and so on. So just a uh, yeah, formatting thing. I think we can put that in a pipeline or I don't know what. Useful, useful thing, I think. Um, other than that, um, one thing I wanted to mention uh, about Anna's ticket, about the connection thingy, um, don't worry. Um, I think it was not a problem that you will lose events because of the connection already established. It was uh, because the subscription um, and uh, ultimately the, um, the um, subscription on the net on the on the message broker we will just be made on subsequent message calls and not as soon as you are connected so the problem here was more like um you need a already established connection um to create the control plane now with anna's changes it, it's way more easier because you can just configure your control plane component this one here and don't need at this moment already the connection to nuts. This one will just later be established when when the connection is um, when the control plane is started. Um, so with the current release of Captain, um, we don't lose events of because of that. It's just nicer to use. Good. That's it from my side. Um, I think I don't know, Andre working then I hand over to you and stop my sharing if there's no question. Thanks so second time. Let's see if it works. Yeah already the screen sharing works as well. Uh, yes yeah, so I think Giovanni already mentioned the zero downtime testing and uh, issues binded with it. So I will move to the new Git credentials model, which was uh, the main issue for me in the last sprint. Um, recently, we decided that uh, we will make a breaking change and refactor the API model for storing the Git credentials. The previous model for the project looked like this. Um, it had a flat hierarchy and actually was not that nice and not that easy to use and to test. So we decided to uh, move to a more sub, more structured uh, hierarchy with, where um, the type of the authentication has its own substructure. And yeah, it's kind of easier, nicer to use, um, more effective as part of this pull request. Uh, as a part of this issue and also pull requests, uh, we decided to kind of normalize uh, the used models um, because actually we were using uh, for each service um, a separate model, which was not that kind of convenient to use because if we needed to make the change, we need to make the changes in all of these models. So now we have just one model for all services which are used widely and therefore it's pretty easy for now um this change is not yet merged because uh, there still need to be some adaptations in the bridge side to actually make it usable uh, but the changes are prepared for the model is placed in go utils where we adapted uh, the models for creating the project for retrieving the project and also um, model for storing the project. 
and also the adaptations for the Captain Core are also done. Um, there were a lot of places which needed to be adapted, um, as well as there was a need to implement a migrator, which will migrate uh, the database and also the secret uh, data um, from the older model to the newer model. So this all is implemented and tested. And hopefully in the next uh, sprint, it will be merged and part of the Captain Core. Uh, I guess that's everything on my side. Are there any questions? So yeah, I will pass it to Ermin now. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'm also having issues with screen sharing. Seems like, oh, now it seems to work. Um, yeah, I plan to present a rather small uh, improvement for the bridge. Um, it's about showing a loading indicator for sequences before, uh, yeah, the filters are, are applied and that the results are dis displayed. So we had there the issue um, that when you switched in the bridge, this is an old image with the issue uh, between tabs. Every time when you switch to the sequence screen, you see for a short while that there are no sequences um, found. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is now uh, fixed so that when you jump to the sequence screen, you see a loading indicator first, and then, of course, as soon as you have the sequences, you see the sequences there. Um, yeah, that's all. already everything about this pull request, and I have to present for this sprint. Uh, other than that, we are uh, working more on refactoring in the bridge, and yeah, not much to show in the UI there. If there are no questions, I'm handing over to Klaus. Thanks. And let me show the screen. Okay. So for me, a uh, lot of bug fixes, or yeah, only bug fixes. So let's jump to the first one. Uh, there was the case that not all evaluations were shown in the environment screen. Uh, this was this one, the evaluations on the right side, uh, only uh, to a maximum of 20 were shown here and not all of them. And yeah, this was due to a missing limit parameter. It was not sent to the back end and now it's correctly set to, to 100 or to the polling or the, to everything, let's say. Now everything is returned and just instead of just the 20 first iterations. Yeah, uh, this was this bug. The next thing is we had a broken UI if the connection was lost. So if in between here or in, in some screen, the call to the project's endpoint or project endpoint uh, did not work, uh, the whole UI was not usable anymore. Some screens like the environment screen just showed the loading indicator and it was not usable anymore. And yeah, this uh, has also been fixed. So if the connection is lost in between, it doesn't matter, the bridge is still usable. Uh, next thing, then yeah, we had some kind of flickering in the sequence screen uh, for the filter. If you selected something here, here and selected a sequence or something, Every time uh, there was a bit of a flickering in the filter, and this is now fixed that it only updates or refreshes when needed. So this yeah, flickering is gone now. Next to that, uh, we had the missing evaluation score in the uh, in the environment screen also. Uh, this was this one here, where the score is missing. This was related uh, only here if the latest event in that sequence was from the webhook service. And yeah, now it is fixed that this correctly fall back to the right evaluation, evaluation here with the right score. Yeah, this was this bug. 
Then the next bug, there was also the case uh, if you select a sequence or a stage uh, and refresh it, it did not select the right stage, but only uh, for a sequence that wasn't initially loaded in the sequence screen. So everything that first 25 worked fine, but if something out of the 25 uh, had another stage selected, it was not working and just selected the latest one. So if we refresh now, the right stage is selected instead of the last one. Yeah. Yeah, this is also fixed. Then the next fix, yeah, we, there were some cases where the uh, SLO file uh, was invalid encoded and then the whole heat map uh, wasn't shown anymore. And yeah, we could not see any evaluation if one evaluation had an invalid SLO file. And yeah, this is also fixed. So if there is an invalid SLO file now, you can see the button is disabled and there's an overlay that you have an invalid encoded SLO file. Uh, yeah, and if there is no SLO file, this button is just uh, not here. It's uh, no, then removed. This was this bug. Then another bug we had uh, for the approval. So if you uh, had an approval or something and accepted it or disliked it, uh, there was the case that two evaluation finished uh, were sent by the bridge server, right by, by the by bridge client. And yeah, this is now also fixed that the bridge only sends one finished event instead of two. This was this bug. And another case, yeah, the project part. So there was the case that if you go to a dashboard, uh, the projects weren't updated correctly. Only uh, if the page is initially loaded, but not if you go to the dashboard again, uh, it showed the old state instead of the current one. And this is also fixed by now. Yeah, and that's everything from my side. Are there any questions? If not, if not, then I will hand over to Meg. Hi there. See if I can share screen. Um, I think uh, we lost you, Mac. Today, this portal is not the most stable one. If you have issue sharing, I can share it for you. Hans, do you have anything to show? Mm, yes, of course. But then let's first take the technical stuff. Okay, I hope my share screen does work. Thing. Okay, does it? Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, currently a bigger task I'm working on is the introduction of state management. Uh, in the bridge Angular project. Therefore, I've made some pre preliminary work, for example, renaming the dashboard, and we want to um, uh, replace component by component. This will be a longer task, so nothing interesting, I think, for the other developers. What um, maybe can be for other systems, now you can configure your auth message, which is displayed on the top right. Um, um, also via uh, Helm values. And if there's a value set, then this, um, this auth command is displayed instead of the default one. Uh, we're heavily working, as you can see, on uh, modularize the Angular project. So they have a lot of 
uh, repeating components, which has to be modularized. So it's basically um, doing the same stuff for over and over for this for these classes. So having a module, and then instead of importing uh, instead of importing the module in the app modules, you just import the module. And so all these components will be removed and it will be more modularized, which uh, is good for um, uh, reducing the size the browser has to load. So not load the whole application at once, but just in smaller chunks. Um, then there was a fix, as you know, if you enable the version checking, then there is a version loaded from the official captain page, something like this. And if it's not retrievable, then uh, it errors. And so there's now a default version creation returned and the UI works as expected. So it does not crash. And another fix. Yeah, some small one when you had a filter uh, in this in this filter bar and you would reload the page. Uh, it often was the case that you had the old, even though you cleared the filter before, then the old um, values were inside and this pull request fixes this and the UI has always the state you expected to have. So yeah, thanks. That's all from my side. So Meg, wanna give it Hi. another try? We could give it another try. Uh, let's... Yeah, can you still hear me? Yep. I'm getting, we can't access your screen. Um, no big deal, you all have the link. Um, I think the, I don't know how much you heard me say, this new tutorial, I think it's pretty good. Um, Adam and Afsal did some beautiful work on it. But it's right now, you make one click. And uh, we're having to sign in for Killer Coda. Um, that if we get a, if we officially sign up for a membership, apparently we're, fr we're free to use it as much as we want to, but we can get past where they will have to sign in. Um, but then otherwise you make one click and wait about three minutes and everything is installed and set up, which the old tutorial, you just went nuts because you had to do all this stuff to get it installed. So. Then would you like to discuss the second point or does the comment? Um, Answer it. Yeah, it was. Um, it sounds like it's okay. Or should, is there anything I need to know for the future? Mm, you should not expect. Um, some so viewers. yeah. Please exactly. Um, so it's, it's just a bug, basically. Um, yeah. So we ran this auto generation of the CLI documentation um, based on when a tag was pushed, uh, regardless of if it was a pre-release or a full release tag. Um, so basically just the, f the filter needs to be set correctly mm -hmm. so that pre-releases won't trigger that anymore. And then you should only get a PR for uh, full releases. And that should be okay. that probably. So it was really fun. It was kind of interesting for about a half an hour um, earlier today. If you went to the docs homepage, you got all the normal stuff, and then after that, you got all of the CLI reference listed right off the homepage. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Nice. Right where you need it. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that. OK, since there are no further topics in the chat, also there is nothing. Any last question, comments, clarification from the audience? No, I hear there's parties going on to be gotten to in Austria. <laughs> yeah, there will be a long weekend for us. 
Have a wonderful time, guys. Thank you very much. So okay. see you at the next developer meeting then in two weeks. It would be uh, whether on Thursday, not on Wednesday anymore. So normal time. Then have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.